Think about a joke. When somebody delivers a joke, if the punchline is too early, then you don't really have a time to observe it. It's not funny. If they take too long to get to the punchline, it's not funny. The timing is everything in being funny for the joke. So hmm. it's the same with music. Yeah, so anyway, we're, we're talking to Giti Razas. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Razas? Yeah. Did yeah. I screw it up? No, no, you Okay, got so it. I didn't screw up anything yet. No, okay. No. <laughs> yeah. I always wondered because I, I known you so, for so long, but I always, I, sometimes the people that you know, you, you, there's some things like that where you, just forget to get right, you know? Yeah. And like people yeah. say that to me all the time about my name. It's like, oh, you know, it's not a big deal if you don't, you know, yeah. saw it or saw it or whatever, whatever you want. I was to actually say. just going to say, <laughs> I, I saw on your website that, which is very smart, you have, you know, pronounced the correct pronunciation of your name. Yeah. Um, and it's sad. And I've been calling you Saad. Well, I tell everybody to call me Saad. Yeah. I even say my name is Saad. I never say my name is Saad. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, I don't know, the people end up screwing it up anyway. Yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather them just call me by a name that no yeah. one's confused by. <laughs> people screw up my name too. So. Yeah, even the first name? Yeah, yeah, I totally yeah. sympathize. Yeah. So you yeah. went to, so you were mentioning that she went to Juilliard. Also, I, I, you know, we, I don't know if we went to Juilliard at the same time. I can't remember if we were. So I, I started Juilliard in 2006 okay. for bachelor's and then um, 2010, I started masters, and then 2012, I graduated. But okay. we did, we did, you did masters at Juilliard. I did right? masters, but I started 2014, and I finished 2016. So we didn't. I guess we didn't overlap. So but, how uh, do I know you? Well, probably, <laughs> well, probably because of the the Carnegie Hall concert, that for sure. But I also before that I knew about you because you studied with John. Yeah, but I studied with with John Corleano. Um, yeah who you also studied with. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I studied with him only 2014 to 2016. Mm -hmm. That's it. But you yeah. studied with him... 2006. To... 2007. Oh, only one year. Just one year. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's quite a while before I started studying with yeah. him. So, I mean, he didn't know about... He didn't know who the heck I was until I got no, there. No, no. I think, I mean, we're still in touch. Uh, he's, he's great. I love him. Um, so, I remember, like... He told me about you, or maybe I saw your name somewhere. I don't know. I mean, in Julia 2000, is... no, not in 2006, though. I <laughs> no, was, I no, was... no, 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 2014. Or okay, yeah, 15, well, that, that would make sense because I was yeah. studying, I was like coming to his apartment yeah. every week yeah, and, yeah. and all that. Yeah, no, not before. Not before. Yeah, yeah, no, he yeah. didn't know who the heck I was. <laughs> uh, I didn't know who the heck I was either <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was later on, I think. Maybe it was. You know, he mentioned in an email. Maybe I'm just making this up. Who knows? I mean, it's, <laughs> if it's in that time frame, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't. Yeah. And after that, I mean, I, we would stay in touch, but def, definitely not as often as I, was, as I would like to, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I'm also kind of like, I mean, I haven't spoke to you in like probably at I least know. five years, you know. I mean, yeah, we've texted yeah, off and on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember you asking a question or. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, every once in a while, but not like, you know, not like a real. A conversation yeah I mean it's hard for composers I feel like we're just yeah. so in our own little bubble you yeah know? so it's work gets done in solitude right you're down here in silence yeah it's yeah. not like you're you know you have the radio or the TV on in the background no. like some you know some people or you can go to a cafe I mean honestly I've never been able to compose at a cafe I know it's like something cool that composers do especially in the city you know so what but is I'm your gonna... composing situation like, like what, yeah. what do you do well i have an office now you know thanks mm -hmm. to you know that's one of the perks of living in the suburbs um and uh, it's great i have a lot of light and um, see a lot of trees so no buildings in front of me which is great um but it's in silence you know yeah. it's me and the piano and my desk and the computer and you know that's that's what it is until lunchtime, and I get, <laughs> you get a couple minutes. Do you minutes use of, a uh, like a real like an upright piano or something, or do you use a synthesizer? Uh, yeah, it's um, so I have a MIDI on my desk, mm -hmm. um, which is I don't know if that's a MIDI or not. That's probably yeah. a yeah. That one is a MIDI controller. <laughs> it doesn't make any sound. Right, um, right. But yeah. yeah. So that's what I have uh, on the desk, and then I have an upright, but it's an electric one. Yamaha. Mm -hmm. So um, the Clavinova uh, or something like that. Um, it's 
Yamaha yeah. brand. I don't know if yeah, but it's probably, a, but it's, a, it's digital. I mean, it's, it's digital. Like, it okay. looks like a uh, upright. Yeah, you know, it looks you know, actually nice and clean and sleek, but it's not, which is great because sometimes I want to play, um, and I can just you know plug my headphone in and nobody can hear. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's something I, I never do. I never practice or do anything of the sort because that yeah. that keyboard doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really inspire you to, to do anything <laughs> yeah. like that. You know? Yeah, like I never practice anything. Like just it's just for my own stuff, which I kind yeah. of I kind of wish I, you know, kept up the keyboard skills, but it just it just never it just never happened. <laughs> yeah, well, it's you know I feel like um, unless you're performing. So you can keep up with, you know, practicing every day for like two hours a day or whatever. It's it's hard, you know, you can't yeah. find the time every day. But are you going to get a um, piano or a electric something? I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, yeah, I can't really envision having, especially down here, because to get the a piano down here, unless it was an upright, would be very hard. But I, yeah. I, I'm not like... Unless that's something I really want to do, I don't mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. That's, I don't do things kind of like half-ass. I would say so. If yeah. I want to get a piano, I would want to get like a nice save up for a nice grand yeah. piano. But right, there's not right. really a place that makes sense, at least in this house, to, because yeah, the yeah. ceilings are not very high and yeah, yeah. and um, like in the living room, there's not really like a, a real space for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in the attic, actually, I'll show you later. Um, we have a big attic where mm -hmm. uh, I want to do like, like in like salon type stuff eventually. Oh, that's great! You, know? you um, got a recording studio here. You got your office, yeah. and then <laughs> but up there I want to have people space. over and have you know right, like right. have friends over. They can play whatever rep they want and just you know have yeah. a little uh, fun. That's area a great idea. There. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. But like I said, it's like I don't want to do. I want to do things the right way. So if yeah. I have to wait, I'll wait. You know, yeah. whatever time that is, because. I'm not moving out of here any anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> that's that's another thing about the verbs, you know, once you get a house, you just kind of stay put. But that's great. You can start your own festival. Call it the Westfield no, no, Festival, wanna, no, you know, recording down here, performance. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that. No, it's just it's just a <laughs> private thing for Yeah. Now quick pit stop to let you know that I do offer one on one consultations and lessons in regards to anything composition related. This can range for helping you put together your portfolio for any composition degree that you're applying to, or you might want to improve your creative chops as a composer from week to week or month to month, or you might want to get a better handle of the behind the scenes of what it's like to be a composer. How do you sell your sheet music? How do you negotiate commission rates? How do you apply to contests? How do you apply to grants? How do you do anything as a composer, let alone just writing the music? So if this is you, you can contact me using the link down in the description below. And like after school, it's so hard to, to like stay in touch with people, you know? Yes. It's like, it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, you know? even performers, right? Oh yeah? Even I performers? I think, so. I think, well no, it's hard to keep in touch because I mean, so many people leave the city, you know, they get yeah. tenure track jobs, um, certainly a lot of composers. And also with performers, you know, they just get a orchestra job or leave, or if they're in the city, they're like super busy, yeah. you know, all the time, like running from uptown to downtown, <laughs> back to uptown doing gigs all over. Um, but, but I stayed in touch with a good bunch. It's funny because when we graduated, you remember Evan Fine? He's a good friend of mine. He's a composer. Well, probably before my time, actually, because I, I had the name probably. rings a bell, but um, yeah. I don't think we've ever, well, think maybe he, we did meet it, but yeah. just. <laughs> well, he teaches at Juilliard now. He teaches evening division and pre-college, I believe. But so he and I, um, at one of these parties, you know, Juilliard parties, yeah. uh, we talked about making a composer, composer group. Um, just um, not like, like a uh, performer type of thing, like putting on concert, but just like, getting together, talking, um, you know, venting. <laughs> and yeah, also a lot of venting. <laughs> a lot of venting, yeah. It's like, um, and then we decided to call it Manhattan Camerata, you know, so, so we were like really proud of that name and um, got a kick out of it every time we had to explain it to somebody. But um, 
uh, and it lasted a good while. We had we had a couple concerts, mm -hmm. which was great. Um, and uh, but then everybody moved away. You know, yeah. like Conrad uh, Winslow was a part of it. He moved to Germany. Um, Nick Cisco, which I think he like. I don't know. I don't. I think he still teaches music, but he's in finance. I think so. You know, people just go. You know, life takes them to yeah, different other directions. Places, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. And but that was fun. I feel like if we could do that in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two of us here. <laughs> there's two of us now. We, we're gonna get people to move out of the city. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the? Do you know Chris Saran? Yes. Yeah, yes, he's I moving do. to Jersey City. Oh, he is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call Jersey City, you know, the, the burbs, really. <laughs> not yes, like where we yes. are. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not that far away, you know. Yeah. He just told me a few, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Are you guys friends? I don't, I mean, I've heard of him and I think maybe you have been we talk, I mean, we talk, together. we text on Instagram and, you know, oh, okay. on email, but I haven't, I haven't seen, I mean, none of these people I've seen in person in, in a while, you know. Yeah. I mean, because busy with the, the house and, and obviously before that, the pandemic and all that stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's hard yeah. to meet, to, to see people again, yeah. you know, and yeah, like, yeah. A, you know, I was saying before we put the, all the cameras on, you know, the, the whole idea of like going to a concert, right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you see all these people that, you know, or are familiar with at least, but you know, how much FaceTime are you going to get with everybody there? Like maybe like yeah. 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> or, yeah. Yeah. Like that's not, true. I mean, when you're in school, I feel like it's a, it's a different deal. Even if you're, if everybody's stressed out, constantly running around, uh, I feel like I, at least at Juilliard, there was this tradition of going to a bar after a concert, especially after oh, yeah. like an orchestral concert, because everybody was just so happy. <laughs> yeah, to be done. Yeah. If it went, yeah, happy to be done, but also if it went well, they were like super, super pumped. But, um, and we used to go, I forget. Oh, I think it was on Columbus. Avenue mm -hmm. is called Harry's Burritos. I don't know if it's I still there. I think it's there. closed down. I think it closed probably like near the time I, I was finishing actually. Yeah. I think it was still there when yeah. I was there, but it was closing by yeah. the time I was out. Yeah, yeah. I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That rings a bell. Yeah. Well, well, we love that place. Uh, people would go there, uh, but then it would get so loud. And it would, everybody would be drunk after 20 minutes and then they would drunk commission you, <laughs> which is, which is like, you know, kind of fun, but also like, I'm not sure if you were serious about this, you know, like, do you really want me to write you a piece, you know, for like clarinet and harpsichord? And <laughs> so, so, but it was fun, you know, you could keep in touch with people. Uh, but when you're out, you know, and especially if you're working with, you know, or an orchestra or even like a chamber ensemble, you know, like um, I just had a, a world premiere with Latitude 49. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ensemble. The yeah. sextet, small yes. group. Yeah. yeah, but I've never met them in person. Oh, OK. Yeah. So and, and this project, I mean, pandemic really changed a lot about yeah. everything in, in the art or at least in music, because um, uh, Janie, the pianist, contacted me in 2017 and you know it took all these years for you know getting a grant making this happen and then pandemic you know everything got yeah um canceled so now finally we had the premiere but i've never actually met them you know so that's another thing when about was the graduating. premiere last night oh just last night okay, okay. sorry i missed that. yeah no that's okay wow so it took, it took five time. years yeah from yeah. from the first you know, email of let's work together. You're yeah. cool. I like your music. Let's work together all the I mean, way. Especially until... with the chamber ensemble, it usually doesn't take that long yeah. uh, to get something. I mean, well, the pandemic right. just destroyed everything. Right, right. And the thing about this ensemble is that, like, they're all over the country. Like, um, Janie and uh, Chris are in California, um, no, Canada. Yeah. And, um, I think Andy is in North Carolina. They're, they're all over the place. Yeah. So it makes it harder for them. I think this was the first time they got together to have a rehearsal and a concert in two years. Jeez. So, have you heard, I mean, have you heard the piece? It was just premiered I, yesterday. I heard, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't live stream, so, but, but they said okay. that they recorded it. I heard a rehearsal. Okay, so you um, heard it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it was just, it was amazing to hear something that I wrote 
you know, two years ago. <laughs> so what's the ensemble exactly? Because I'm sure lots of yeah. people don't know. Latitude 49, it's... Uh... Yeah, it's um, percussion, piano, mm -hmm. violin, cello, clarinet, and saxophone. Oh, okay. So it's like a Perot ensemble plus saxophone yeah. situation. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. cool that they have saxophone. It is. It's very cool. Um, it was my first time writing for saxophone, so I had to like... It's funny because uh, Corleano, at least in our lessons, uh, I don't remember if I brought, I think I did bring a piece with saxophones in it. He's like, I don't want to talk about the saxophones. I don't write for saxophone. <laughs> uh, I'm like, huh? What do you mean you don't write for a saxophone? It's he just like, wrote a concert. And he saxophone. just wrote a saxophone concert. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, yeah. I remember the year I studied with him um, was his um, third symphony, which is for band. What's it called? I forget. Circus, Circus Maximus. Maximus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that one had just come out, and I remember he um, he let me borrow the manuscript. So not not like an official published, but it was like a, a, a facsimile of his manuscript, handwritten. Or oh, handwritten. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I think you know, at our lesson, he was like, oh, just take this and go listen to it. I feel like he was trying to explain some concept to me and we were like running out of time and I was just like, huh? So he's, <laughs> he, he's just like, just take it and study with it. And, I, and, I, and he was like, be careful with it. So I was like, I remember I was just like hugging it like this because it was a big old manuscript. And yeah. It was just like, you know, running in Manhattan, trying not to get wet because it was raining. So, um, and that piece has some cool saxophone parts. You know, I've never actually heard that piece. Oh, really? That's like one of the pieces of his I haven't heard because I, yeah. I want to hear it live because of all the oh the, yeah the, the marching around and the surround thing and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. I don't I don't want to yeah. hear it uh, until I hear it live, which yeah. is weird. Like all his other pieces I've heard basically yeah. Yeah. all the major ones at least. Yeah, you know, I've actually I, never heard that one live either. I mean, it's Maximus. just yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think it, it's ever been performed in New York City, has it? I feel like it must have been, but it, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. I have no idea, but. Because, uh, I mean, it requires I don't think it gets such done massive, yeah. massive force, and it would, make for, it would make sense for universities, you know, because they already yeah. have like a windman. But I don't think that but... piece gets done that often. Yeah. Um, okay. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I think, I don't think so, because it's a long piece, and bands yeah. don't really play long 40 minute things. Yeah, it's a symphony. Yeah, they usually and, play a bunch yeah. of ten-minute pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that one is special. I remember, like, it's got this. Um, I think it's the se uh, second movement. It's got this saxophone quartet that's like a whole mm -hmm. sultry, and it's supposed to be like night music. I think the movement is called night music or something like that, which is like very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because yeah, that story with you uh, holding his one I, that happened to me too. He he gave me. Um, we were both. At the same time, without knowing it, between each other, working on a violin, no, an orchestra arrangement of a violin piece that we both wrote. Uh -huh. You know, so like I wrote this piece called Command Fantasy. It's like this violin piano thing. Um, and he wrote a solo violin piece called Stomp. Oh, yes. And he, we were like, without knowing, I mean, what? I, mean, I was working on it over the summer, so we didn't have lessons so i actually did it in like six weeks i just like arranged it for orchestra mm. and then i come back for lessons in the fall and he has like this orchestra like he's working on this orchestral version of stomp oh really There's yeah an orchestra oh, interesting. yeah the new york philharmonic did it so he he gave me a score the oh, score yes, as that's well that's right that's right yeah, yeah so I, I was also the same i gotta you know, hide the, <laughs> Pro so. protect it he yeah. does do that he gives i don't know why he does it but he yeah yeah no it was it was amazing i was i was you know, surprised that he gave me like the actual manuscript, you know, handwritten and everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, good times. Yeah. Yeah. So after you finished from Juilliard, so you did your bachelor's, you did your master's. So it's been a while. I, I didn't even realize this myself. Twenty. Uh, you said twenty twelve, right? Yeah. So it's, ten been, years. it's been ten years. Oh. So, now I feel old. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, uh, for me, it's been six years. That feels like a long. I mean, it feels like a long time. You know. Yeah. Um. But you don't you never felt the need to go back for a doctorate or any of this stuff that all these like all my friends it's like oh my god i gotta go in for a doctorate like yeah. everyone's freaking out after the but you didn't seem to have that you know i 2016 i was actually um i went back and forth a lot 
after mm-hmm. graduation. I was like, should I do it? Should I not do it? Finally, I decided to take a year off. Um, I got a teaching job at Ramapo, part-time oh, faculty, wow. yeah, teaching um, ear training and um, theory. Yeah. But Ramapo situ- situation at Ramapo is very strange because they don't have here in Jersey. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, college, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Mawa. Where is that? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know all my. I don't know all my towns yet here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're new here. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was about an hour bus ride from the city. Yeah. So, um, uh, they didn't have auditions for students. So somebody could wake up one morning and be like, I want to be a music major. So it was tough because the theory class, people were all sorts of levels. And it was like, for me, out of getting out of school, you know, and then all of a sudden, like being on the other side of the fence, trying to teach a bunch of kids who are like, some of them know stuff, some of them don't know stuff and how to like, you know, manage that. Yeah. So that was, you know, it was interesting, but it was challenging. And you're used to like such a high level of theory and ear training savants at Juilliard, basically. (laughs) You're surrounded by them, you know, it's like, and then you end up, and then you go to a place where it's quite the opposite and then trying yeah. to also figure out okay yes i'm a juilliard grad fine but how do i how do i become like like tone it a, down yeah, tone and, it down not, yeah. you know and not, and be more what's the word um uh you know uh, more of a person to them like more relatable you know more yeah. relatable to the students yeah and not yeah, just yeah. like this person that went to juilliard because yeah. that's not helpful yeah. as a teacher yeah. at especially all especially if you're very young yeah. Then it's just like, you look like me, you know, who are you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, uh, you know, what was interesting is that it, some of the stuff you, you're saying is so true, especially for ear training. I walked in and I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? And I was like, I'm going to teach them solfege on, <laughs> <laughs> on, um, on a fixed dough. And I brought in Dandelo with me. You and did? They, I did. <laughs> and they were like... The heck I, is that? I didn't even go to alto clef or tenor clef, oh, any yeah, of those. I mean, but it was just like treble and bass, and they were like, no. <laughs> I mean, they did it, but it was just like, I was like, okay, no, no, this is not going to work. Um, but then the dictations and stuff like that, they found it useful. I remember even like one student, uh, like the one time that I felt like, oh, yay, maybe I am a good teacher, was like, you know, he was trying to write something down and he was like, it was the skills in the class, like being able to hear and then yeah. like, I was like, oh, this is great, you know, so it works. But but it was, you know, it, you're right that when you enter that world of academia, it's it's different. It becomes all about that. It becomes about giving homework and checking homework and doing the midterm and the finals. It's very much like day to day. And of course, if you've been teaching for like 20 years and everything's like already there, you just show up right. in your um, syllabus from like 15 years ago. And, and you you're can't, set to go. <laughs> and you can't help being self-conscious about how you're teaching. Just the same way we're all, we're so self-critical when we compose. Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. like, and teaching is so much more immediate than composing mm-hmm. composing you, know, you write the thing for three four five six months so you don't really know what it's like at the other side but when right, you're teaching right. you're like right there in front of yeah. like yeah. 20 students or whatever yeah and you feel like at least for me i feel like more pressure with the teaching mm-hmm. to be better the next time yes but with the composing yeah. it's like i might not be any good for another 20 years right you know it's just right. like well, you know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, but the thing about com- composing is that it changes. I mean, from day to day, you wake up and the piece is different. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get into that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, not to, not to change subjects. I think, I think you're right that, you know, in teaching, you're sort of like you're performing. You have to deliver some material and it has to, be, has to make sense, has to be helpful and all yeah. of that. Um, I think for me, the biggest challenge, though, was to feel like I'm an, the authority in the classroom oh and right well that's a whole different uh, that's a whole game. different dynamic yeah, yeah. yeah because some of this as i said like uh the students they could just wake up one day and be like i want to be a music major so they were like all sorts of different ages all sorts of backgrounds and it yeah. was like and, and of course i mean when i was at juilliard i didn't do like a ton of teaching i did like a couple ta um gigs but so it was it was challenging 
you know, yeah. <laughs> down down to the suit I had to wear. You know, <laughs> like showing up with a suit, it was just like that's not. How yeah, that's right, right? They at Juilliard, everyone was wearing like really formal clothes when they teach. Whereas, right, right. Uh, yeah. Like at Columbia, where I'm doing my doctorate, um, no one's f- wears formal clothes. Even yeah. even actually, I don't know why I wore this today. To be honest, it's my my wife's my wife's dad got it for me, and I wanted to wear something <laughs> long sleeve, and I put it on. I'm like, oh, this is like yeah. I'm going to a concert in this. Oh, that's kind of colder. But today. nobody nobody even people dress down yeah. compared to this. Yeah. Uh, at um, at Columbia, you yeah. know, I show up in like a t-shirt and jeans, and I teach, and it's nobody cares and, yeah, yeah and they don't like not respect me for doing that they, yeah uh the opposite happened actually the first semester i taught i was in like a, like what you're saying i was in a dress shirt blazer slacks mm-hmm. dress shoes and i had them call me like a professor had dad all this crap you know uh-huh. to make me feel like but right. it was it was the opposite effect actually oh, really? it, it nobody wanted to talk in class um it was really hard to get engagement um, and I also wasn't having a good time. I was miserable, right. like yeah, from yeah. class to class. And when yeah. I when I made it like less formal, mm. it it opened everybody up. Yeah. And it made it more of an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So right now the teaching that you do, are, is it at Columbia? Is it really like the com? Yeah. So I, I, at Columbia, so Columbia, this is it's a, it's supposed to be a five year program, but because of the pandemic, they extended it. Mm-hmm. So it's six years. So I'm in my sixth year. First two years is coursework. Um, I actually had a lot of credits transferred from Juilliard. Lucky for me, hmm. from the masters. So a lot of coursework. I had like almost a year worth of coursework I didn't have to do at Columbia. Are you serious? Yeah. So I really had like a year of coursework. That's you know? Crazy. Yeah, I had like twelve credits transfer from Juilliard, and most of them were from my independent studies with Mari Kimura. Mm-hmm. Do you remember oh, her? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, with the it, Maximus P. Yeah, because all the yeah. electronic stuff. So I didn't have sure. to do any electronic stuff at Columbia. Yeah, and they um, really take it seriously there. At Columbia, yeah, but they know Mari, so they they look yeah. at the at my transcript. They mm-hmm. saw Mari's name, like okay, you you did something over there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, because that's one of the things about Julia, there is no emphasis on um, um, electronic music. No. I mean, we have a film scoring class and a logic class, as far as I remember. No, but There's it's probably not, more. It's, no, it's not. It's not. I mean, you know, it's I'm like, not I'm not uh, trying to bag on Julia or anything, but it's not a very serious program. I mean, compared to like, I mean, I was at USC, and that was like a very serious film or and and, yeah. mu- and they had big music production classes also what do you Logic mean by serious like the in terms of the funding in terms of the, n- the number of people in the classes the number of faculty devoted to teaching music production and max and how to score for film and, mm-hmm. and also the opportunities like at juilliard there was no easy like st- or not easy streamlined way of collaborating with uh, filmmakers so like if you're a composer right. and you want to collaborate with a filmmaker, how do you do that? You can't just yeah. do it. At USC, you could do it. You just go across the, you go yeah. to a bunch. There's so easy to meet a filmmaker, uh, right, and, um, right. a student filmmaker at USC. And we had all these classes. You can minor in cinema, which yeah. I did for a couple of years. That's great. At USC. Um, but it's just, yeah. it's just, Juilliard is not a place f- yeah. for that. It's just Well, not. you can do the same thing, but with dancers. It's sort right. of like you can, you know, and, and, but that's another form of art and it's not, you know, it's not, doesn't go everywhere like films go. Right. Um, but, but it's another, it's another, I guess because it's built into the school, you know, we had like dance, drama, music, but, you know, so if we yeah. had like a film department. I think. Yeah, Maybe. if there was a film department <laughs> or if there was some kind of connection with Columbia or NYU. Right. Uh, especially right. NYU, you know, because they have a very rigorous oh, yes. film program. I mean, they have a film music major over there, right. too. I mean, right, yeah. A, so, I, I mean, I think film music is a very different thing than. Uh, is that what you're interested in? Film music? No, no, no. I'm, I'm interested. I like film music. I have friends that are doing film. They're, they're doing film music. Um, I know some of the people that that do that mm. stuff but it's not something that i feel like i'm yeah. qualified to do at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a whole different thing like, it, it is a whole different it's just thing. different day-to-day life is different they work like 14 hour days yeah they don't do they don't and they don't have time to write their own music which i can't i can't live without doing you know yeah 
I yeah. can't just write whatever, um, whatever they ask me to do yeah. for the next. That's, that's right. a big problem for me. You know, they ask you to be very specific, and I mean, um, you sort of experience some of that in the dance world. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with uh, choreographers a lot, and one good choreographer, which you know, these things are great. You, you see, you know, a composer or a um, film music writer, you know. Uh, makes friends with a director and they keep working together for right. years and years, which yeah. I love when I see something like that, you know, when, when you know that collaboration is genuine. So um, I was able, I was lucky to find that in um, dance world. Mm -hmm. um, choreographer Robert Bennett that we've been work, working together. Um, I mean, he's great. You know, you sort of, when you're collaborating, you really have to like line up, like you have to be on the same frequency, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, uh, to work with somebody. Um, so that was great, but it is still like, you know, hey, I need 10 more seconds of this because I need to get like 15 people across the stage. Right. So, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, so it happens, but it's, more relaxed you know it's not like film music that you have to be like hitting certain points and you know it's different and well, you're writing for somebody else well, you well really with are. film the, usually the film is done mm -hmm. and then you gotta match it right but with yeah. at least i don't do much dance anymore but with your experience do you find that that's what it was like you do the dance and then you do the f music or was no, it more no. like it this, was or was it more you do the music than the dance i had matches? to start it Mm -hmm. um, but the good thing about Rob, collaboration with Rob was that, um, so for example, the last ballet we did together was the uh, Kreutzer Sonata based mm -hmm. on the novella by Tolstoy, which is, you know, kind of based about the, the violin sonata of Beethoven. Beethoven yeah. yeah, so um, so that one we sort of, because there is a plot and it wasn't abstract, um, we kind of wrote down scene by scene what happens mm -hmm. and then the emotional um, arc of each scene. So I had places that I wanted to hit with the music, you know, in terms of like um, like a dramatic arrival or yeah. whatever. And so we knew that something and he probably had, he did have ideas about what he wanted to do. Like he knew this scene is going to be one person. So it's like very muted, very... Personal. Like one one dancer. One dancer, yeah. Okay, okay. Or this scene is going to be for um, a group of dancers. So we wanted to open up. We wanted to be bigger and orchestral. So so there were some back and forth. I mean, beautiful collaboration. I love that. I love yeah. collaborating with people. You know, it gets me out of my head. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be. It's the greatest thing when it works well. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. It's the best thing. Yeah. Who doesn't want to be? Yeah going it's going back and forth with someone that is like-minded you know yeah and yeah. but also challenges you yeah. the, but it has a good balance not just it's constant same, challenging it's exactly the same way i find it in teaching too teaching mm -hmm. one-on-one -on -one, like teaching composition mm -hmm. like you have to get that person that you're teaching with i certainly felt like when i was a student you know like yeah. i had to be on the same vibe or you know frequency as the person I was studying with. It's kind of like therapy. <laughs> no, all, 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 especially one-on-one -on -one teaching is, 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 is therapy. Well, for the student and for the, uh, well, they don't know it, but it's for the teacher too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's all about therapy. <laughs> now I find after I have a lesson with the student, um, I, I'm like, I want to get off the, the call or off the lesson and, and write immediately. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, yes. Not not of anything based on what we talked about, but just because I'm in the I'm in the zone of yeah. like thinking. You're invigorated. Right. But like when I'm, you know, I have coffee or whatever in the morning, I come down here to write, I'm like my my mind honestly is blank. <laughs> like I just Yeah. Like, my mind is not like working yeah. at all. It's just all right, I have notes, I have my piano. That's the only reason I'm writing. But when you're you know, talking to somebody about these things, you're, you know, it's like going to the yeah. gym or something. You got to warm yes, up, you know, yeah. you can't just hit the, the bench press and expect anything to happen. Yes. Especially when you're creating, you know, something out of not, nothing. And then, you know, it's, it's art it has to be beautiful and original and, you know, yeah. like impactful, you know, emotionally and all of that, you know, it's hard. It's hard to do that. Wake up every day and be an original composer, right. you know, and this thing that you're writing, it happens, it's sound, but you don't see it. You don't hear it in life. It's just in your head. So it's kind of a crazy thing we do. 
if you yeah. think about it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I know. I mean, speaking of things that are that are in your head, that have been in your head for a while, I got the plug here. This is Giti Raza's The Strange Highway. Um, so this is, I've just listened to this, uh, I have to be honest, I listened to it today, <laughs> but I listened to the whole thing. Um, it's, it's, it's really great. It has, it's all like string music, which is interesting. Mostly, yeah. I don't hear like composers, uh, especially with like coming out with albums today that, that do everything most, except for the last piece, um, mm -hmm. the orchestra piece, but even that is a string heavy, uh, piece too. I mean, what, uh, like, first of all, the the practicalities of making an album uh -huh. i find it super scary you know to, to even <laughs> think is. about producing something like this that's in my Tangible, hand and, you can hold it you know it. what i mean and uh yeah and not just like a youtube video or something um, yeah or even like you know um, just somebody recording a concert and putting it up online yeah. or on soundcloud uh, i mean this yeah. is something you thought about so yeah um yeah and took time so uh, yeah. what was like the I guess the impetus for doing something like this. Well, um, so the music on this album uh, covers about 15 years of my career as a composer. And uh, every single piece um, meant something to me. It was either the collaborator or the place and time I was in when I was writing it. In other words, you know, um, uh, emotionally, I feel like it, it meant something. And mm -hmm. it was, it, it happened during a period of time in my life that um, was important, was challenging, important, but also changed me in some way or another. Um, and it's also inspired by works, works of art that I just adore. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's how, that's how it happened. But the fact that it became all string music, that wasn't something that I thought about. There were some pieces that I knew I wanted to. I want it there. It was um, the Strange Highway, which is the mm -hmm. uh, title. The piece. cello octet, yeah. The cello octet and Metamorphosis of Narcissus, which is the the last track. It's mm -hmm. for chamber orchestra and uh, electronics. So these two pieces, I knew I wanted them, and they happened to become the bookends. And um, mm -hmm. and uh, the the next piece was Legend of Psy, which I collaborated with Imbal Sagav on it. And uh, that one also had a, you know, a, a beautiful collaboration and saga. And that, you know. that piece has such a unique, uh, I hate to use that freaking word unique, but it, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's true though. I mean, especially with that piece as a, the sound world is, um, yeah, it's, it's very special. It actually reminds me of the, of the metamorphosis, metamorphosis piece too. The, the, it's interesting that it's like in the same kind of language. Yeah. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but uh, uh, going yeah, back and yeah. forth, I mean, hearing it all together, it, it feels very much part of the same composer, which is very cool. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it wasn't something conscious. I, I think the, both pieces have electronics and it's just the way that I use electronics in my music. Yeah. It's just, I use it as, um, I don't know, for, for me, electronics is um, almost like if I wanted, I'm a very visual person, so if I wanted to describe it, it's al almost like a halo or a shadow mm -hmm. of the instruments. So it's there to support, to, to um, highlight the actual instruments. It's not, you know, like something different from another world that's just interrupting or... Um, yeah, and it's not an, it's not like an extension either of the instrument. It's not like you're making a super cello, or or it's like yeah, that makes sense actually. It's like a glowing cello, in yeah, a way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that specific piece, Legend of Psy, is for cello and then pre-recorded cello and electronics, and and it was fun because um, the um, the first time I did this was uh, with a piece called Shadow Lines, and it was a ten-minute piece for Jeffrey mm -hmm. Ziegler. Um, He's a wonderful cellist, and uh, I had the pleasure of working with him, and I was like, oh my God, here's a great cellist. What can I do? And I want to do everything, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. And so that piece came about, and Imbal came to the concert, and she was like, I want something like that, but I want it to be twice as long. And what oh, she wow. meant by that was uh, she liked the, um, the instrumentation. I mean, it, it's funny, I was um, doing a talk at a university and somebody was like, well, what's the difference? These two pieces, you did the same thing. But the truth is, I mean, there are like a million string quartets out there. There's a composer who's written like 15 or, I don't know, 75 string quartets. It's a yeah. genre, right? Right. And that's how I think about it. 
the genre happens to be with one instrument. It's just produced by pre-recording that instrument, layering it. That's an interesting way to think and, about it, actually. Um, yeah. And uh, electronics. Yeah. So, so there's the language of music is different. The material is different. I'm just using, like, you know, for example, you have many orchestral works. Right? But yeah, they're not. Many 10 minute ones. <laughs> well, that's how it is. They want a 10 minute but that's, but no, that's, 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 a, that's a good point, though. I never thought about it that way. I, uh, with string quartets, orchestra pieces, symphonies, what else? Uh, even like piano trios, things yeah. like that. It's okay if you Art write songs. 30 of them. No one's yeah. going to bat an eye. Look but if at you write, Schubert. That's yeah. all he did. 700 something plus art songs. You know, yeah. Did he write the same thing over and over? No. It's just, right. you know, the, the thing is like, it's a, it's a new concept and that's another thing about being outside of school. So you don't have mm -hmm. access to um, an already existing uh, chamber ensemble, a quintet or a string quartet, you know, everything is outside. And, and so when you're working, chances are you get to work with individuals mm -hmm. a lot, one performer, which could be great because as much as it's your baby, it's their baby too, as much as you want it right. to live on and have a good life, the piece I mean. They want the same thing. So it's that's wonderful. But at the same time, if you crave bigger sound, an orchestral sound, right. it's different. Well, that, that's the problem I have uh, with commissions uh, lately. Or I mean, when I say lately, the last five, six years, is that you have the commissioner who gives you the money, right? But the people that are playing your music, they didn't, most of the time, they don't have a say <laughs> that... They're, oh, yeah. that they, that they're gonna that they didn't have a say in playing music it's mm -hmm. just that they're part of an institution that says we're gonna play so-and-so's music but the musicians have no say so when you show up to a performance a rehearsal you know for the for the piece um the kind of the enthusiasm level is very different throughout yeah. the throughout the whole institution but when you're working with one player or even like or latitude 49 or yes, like yeah. these people that you're you know you're close with um it, the experience is completely different like yeah, the end yeah. result is the same you're going to get a good sounding recording uh, from any of these things but you could but you know the chances I mean, are a professional group yes, generally yes, speaking yeah. yeah 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 but the experience exactly and as a composer i feel like for us and perhaps this is one of the differences you know when it comes to um, having a career in music as a composer for us it really is about the process right because right. that's yeah. the long thing that's what we're living through but for a performer i mean they practice but the moment of performance mm -hmm. the, the moment that you get to shine that's sort of like yeah. that's um the goal right right but it's you, you know practice the, the, for that the goal. process of uh, composing is not very tiktokable <laughs> you know <laughs> whereas uh, you know you see people like hillary hahn you know or or uh, you know, uh, oh. showing um, her practice routine and people follow it and people are very invested in it. But yeah, I, yeah. I've never seen that happen with a composer. Because it's very boring. <laughs> We're just sitting there and thinking in silence. You know, every yeah. once in a while we scribble something, but yeah. but that's just the life of it. You know, and that's yeah. how it is. That's why collaborating is so refreshing. Yeah. Because you have you're talking with a voice outside of your head. Mm -hmm. You know and. And also teaching, it's invigorating right. in that sense. You're, and I feel like I completely agree when, I, when I'm teaching. Of course, if my students have prepared, if they don't prepare, <laughs> <laughs> it's another story. Right, right. But once they show up and they have you know, good material and they're you know, hungry and eager to learn, then you know, I'm, I have stuff to, to give them. You know, I have... Um, my brain starts working, yeah. you know, and it's the same effect that you said, you know, all of a sudden I just want to, I'm like, oh, I talked about that. Why don't I just do this with my own piece, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have a responsibility to them just as much as you have a responsibility to your work. Mm -hmm. So it, it works both ways. And yeah. I guess that's why a lot of composers are teachers and same with performers. A lot of them are also teachers. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of, you know, composers that are also insurance agents <laughs> you know, <laughs> unless you're like Charles yeah. Ives or yeah, right, right, someone like yeah. that like the the dual life of a composer is usually composer teacher yeah composer educator composer yeah. uh you know it's not composer uh you know 
bartender or composer yeah. uh, actor because it's a or, hard hat you know. to come off right you want to stay you have to stay in music and i feel like for me process of composition it just it's so slow yeah. and it's hard and uh, i really you know it, it took me a long time i mean when i met with john for the first time and when i got to know his process i mean it was attractive it was um i'm, I'm talking about the graphing Oh, the graphing and, yeah. The aspect. Yeah. So John, he would, John Corleano, he would make these really beautiful, uh, huge graphs. Yeah. Uh, uh, he would have a timeline and then use all the different colored pencils. Colored and things pencils like that. And, and all of that. And I feel like it's, it's so wonderful. And, you know, this happens when you're, when you're learning creativity. You know, it's very hard to teach composition. How do you teach somebody to be original and to create? something i mean there's a very fine line between yeah. teaching and telling them what to do guiding the art as opposed to be like no this is how you compose right so so i feel like this was one of the moments that i just observed and i guess you know if you go back in history that's how all the painters you know like the right. the um the pupil would be just like making the paint and waiting in the master's <laughs> painting and it's like all right it's finished <laughs> and that's how they learn right just right. by observing and and for me that was one of the ways that you can observe composition it's like seeing his process you know and to make that process my own it took a long time so for example i'm writing an orchestral piece now and for me you know with life you know, I'm married, I have a four-year-old, you know, this composer hat, teacher hat has to come off, you know, and we have to put it back on every right. day, right? So, um, so for me to go back to composing and preserve whatever I had built upon yesterday and to just start building on that, it's, uh, I find it hard. Yeah. It's fickle. You know, it changes. Something that I thought it was mesmerizing and amazing all of a sudden just seems boring. <laughs> and just everything, yeah, <laughs> it's, everything is wrong with it. Now, I feel like it's because what we work with, at least for me as a composer, I feel most of the time I feel like I'm a... Sorry, it just touched the microphone. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, I feel like um, a sculptor. Mm -hmm. You know, I got this lump of material and every day I'm just shaving it off. I'm carving it. And, you know, sometimes it's a chisel and it's a pain, you know, but, but it's a hard process, um, except for this thing is invisible, right? And it's, it's made of sound and vibration. Right. So how do I make this stick with me? How can I come back to it and be exactly in the mindset that I lifted in? yesterday right it's not like a tangible thing like your mortgage or your or yeah. your uh you know the food you have to prepare that day yeah, or, or even it's, teaching it's like we're teaching which is yeah. tangible like all these yeah. things that we are constantly bombarded with every day yeah yeah exactly right? and so to to get back into that zone you know so to speak uh i started doing that the graphing mm -hmm. And so for my orchestra piece now, I, I love stationery. So I went and I bought um, these graphing papers. The size of one page is this big. Oh, yeah. that's, that's bigger than the ones he was using, I uh, think. Yeah, it's great. And I have for this um, eight minute piece, again, orchestra piece, you know, five to eight minute. That's what, that's what they want. Right, you know? always. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to commission a 40 minute piece from you. Uh, or, even, or even 20, 15, 20 minutes. I know, we'll something. be happy with that, right? Um, <laughs> So I graphed the entire piece with pastel because I wanted it bold and I wanted to be able to see it. And I have five of these. So, and I've covered the entire wall of my room. So I walk in and I see it. So you, wow. So you have, that's, wow. So you have like five of these, like that big. Yeah. For and like I take five them. to eight minutes. So like each one of these must be like a minute, right? Yeah. But that's the thing that's movable. The thing that's not movable is the events that happen. So the way I use drawing is um, I, I have ideas. So it goes back to, you know, your composing process yeah. and everybody's process is different. For me, I get ideas like I have this idea for the middle. This material is 
transition this could be maybe the first you know 10-15 seconds of the piece and you know the ending I have no idea what's going to happen but what I want to do is take material from here let's just say that's the way I work so and then I have a general idea of how I want the things to flow into each other mm -hmm. because music is an art form it's not like painting that you can focus on one part of it and you can look at that and if you don't like the other part yeah. you just don't you know like you, when you sit there you're you're absolutely um bound to it so wherever it takes you you go with it right so for me it's that flow and how long do i take to to mm -hmm. develop that material so sometimes i write down notes around my you know drawings of what material goes there so with staff paper and all of so that so it's not necessarily a timeline the way that john did it it's more of it's like a way of putting rough. putting yes. ideas on something that you can see that yeah. you don't have to flip through it's yes. more like that yeah yes so I when i see it i see the whole thing i remember the whole thing ah, okay. and and uh, beneath every um section i actually have a picture Oh yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, we'll send it to me. And we'll overlay it. Yeah. Um, we'll overlay it on this part, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so then I have the material too. So when I'm looking at it, I can hear it. I can remember what it was, what mm -hmm. this was, and then I have a general idea of how long I want it to be. But this was one of the things that I had to relax about. You know, when I was younger, and I would do the graph, I'd be like, God, I can't get this to be two minutes. I'm so <laughs> mad. This doesn't work. But now it's just, you know, like you have to move and you have to be flexible with the material. You know, there's this, this back and forth, you know, right? And the, and the listener is not going to care whether that section was two minutes or a minute 30 or five minutes. Either. They're not going to yeah. know what you were thinking. Yeah, but they're going to feel the it. Right. Well, you you know? Know? yes. And, and that's the thing. I mean, when I'm talking to my students, I, you know, and uh, I have young students who are who i love teaching young people because they're just so hungry how young like uh like 16 17 okay i'm not like super young no no, like no. Uh, yeah <laughs> i mean i mean pre-college yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah and but but you know they have some knowledge of theory but they don't know how to incorporate you know it's just so different and you know here we go back into teaching but it's like you know, here we have the container for music theory and mm -hmm. here you're being a composer and to be integrating all of that, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you find people who have, who have trouble doing that. So I just use an example for them, uh, for my students. And I'm like, think about a joke. When somebody uh, delivers a joke, if the punchline is too early, then you don't really have a time to observe it. It's not funny. Mm. If they take too long to get to the punchline, it's not funny. Mm -hmm. The timing is everything in being funny for the joke. Right. So hmm. it's the same with music. The punchline are the arrivals, are the cadences, and mm -hmm. the moments that um, big things happen. Or if you think in drama, they talk about beat, the drum, dramatic beat. Right. You know, we all have these things in different art forms. So in music, if the development is too long, you know, and it's just meandering, then people lose interest and attention, you know, like you have to deliver something. Now we're not talking about TikTok generation, no, you know, no. like I just can't stand it. I, I can't, but I'm, you I'm know, not going the, the, to, <laughs> not gonna I, join. I've, I've seen, I've seen a bunch of these, uh, speaking of jokes, I, I mean, I follow a lot of comedians and people like that. And they, I think do the, I mean, this is gonna sound crazy, but bear with me. Uh, I think they are the artists that do the best job of figuring all this stuff out. Yes. Because, and you know, stay with me, <laughs> they, when they do a comedy special, I mean, it's like an hour long and the people that are there want to see them and they're there for it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's long, it's an hour, you know? And yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I it's watch more than, them. Worse than teaching. <laughs> huh? Yeah. It's long. I mean, yeah. it's, it, you gotta be, and you have to pay attention because, mm -hmm. you know, they would have a joke, they would start off the set with something um, and then they might bring it back like mm -hmm. as, an, as an inside joke half an hour later, right. which happens all the time when you exactly. write a symphony or something like this. If yes. you, you gotta pay attention, yeah. right? Yeah. So that something from the first movement comes back in the fourth, which yeah. is what like Beethoven knows all yeah. the time, right? So I feel like the comedians now have that down. And then 
they they even go longer they have podcasts where they talk for two hours three hours about literally nothing which is like like improvising you're just mm-hmm. talking and then they have the super short form tiktok content where it's just like these one-liners that they just throw out there yeah and that would like help you get into their I've it's been, it happened to me so many times where I watched some TikTok of some comedian I've never heard of. Yeah. And like all of a sudden now I want to go see their show in yeah. New York. Yeah. After watching like a few 20 second clips. Right, right. And but painters it's different don't music. do, you know. Pa- yeah. But music because I feel and I I think that uh, now I have to get a little bit philosophical if you don't yeah, mind. But, that, but that's, you know, that's just my thing, you know. It, it, why is it that people are so like um, contemporary music comes uh, across as offensive to a lot of people? Hmm. They can, you know, it's like orchestras want a commission. They pack it with like a Mozart and a Beethoven and then they put a five minute piece there in the middle so nobody pays attention to it. Why is that? Why is that people don't want to go to a concert for an orchestra that's just new music? because music has an incredible power on the mm-hmm. human psyche. It's, it goes into our brain, we cannot escape it. Mm-hmm. So in other words, when a composer is, you know, like the power in that is immense, you know, like for dance or for even movie, you can just turn around. But if you're sitting in a room, you have to listen. Right. And, and it's vibration. Sound is vibration. We are vibration. Everything is a vibration. It's all energy, right? So, so when you're listening to something, this idea of getting in sync with something. So, I mean, if you go back in history, people used music to get uh, the soldiers into war um, mindset. Right. Yeah, the drumming kind of like like the accompaniment to the war. Yes, exactly. They want to relax to go to a spa. They're playing music that's like so soft. It can just put you to sleep. Why is that? Because it's all vibration and you sync with that. And then that becomes your um, existence Mm -hmm. for that short amount of time, right? And so that's why uh, I brought up the whole idea of a joke. Of course, it's very different. And I mean, I use. This is, this is just something that I say for my students, you know, and sometimes I feel like if I want to tell them, you know, to make this longer, to make this shorter, the best way I can tell them is that because everybody gets it. But the truth is, you know, when you're saying you, all you have to do, if you want to be funny, I mean, my daughter thinks dropping an egg on the floor (laughs) is funny. She laughs, but, but with music, it's different because you're playing with people's psyche. You're playing with, um, their whole being. You know, and, and it's been, maybe we don't talk about it or think about it that way, but it's been like that ever since people discovered sound and the effect it has on people. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And, yeah. And it's when you watch a film, for example, you watch a film to escape reality in a way. Mm-hmm. I mean, oftentimes you're watching it because you want to, you want to see something funny or you want to see something terrifying or you want to see something uh, thrilling or you want to just be entertained mm-hmm. but that kind of mindset is not really there I feel like for especially non-vocal instrumental music that kind of mindset kind of fell by the wayside after Beethoven it, it feels like um, mm-hmm. yeah I don't know why that is it, it I, I do feel I have to be honest I do feel that way when I listen to uh, Georg Friedrich Haas's music Um, he was my teacher for a couple years at Columbia, but I went to, this is the show I was talking about earlier. I went to last week. It was all Haas, but like when I was there sitting there, I mean, I didn't think about anything else. I was just focused on the music and, and I just like, let it take me, like let it trust, like trust it to take me somewhere. Um, and I don't feel, I have to, I mean, with a lot of music in general I don't I usually don't feel that way I was okay that was a nice piece let's hear the next one and you're there for more of the social gathering aspect than the than the listening to the music part of it right and that's 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 a big problem I have with concerts in general yeah Um, and I mean music serves those purposes too you know it it has a huge social thing at least you know it was like that in the past it still is Mm -hmm. you know and all of that is true but uh, concert music, music for art, abstract music, for that, you have to be completely open. It's, all, it's almost like 
get on this roller coaster and、right. let me take you places. That's what、yeah. the composer is saying. And if there is resistance, if they won't give themselves to it, they're not going to connect with it. They get bored. They're like,、ah, I don't like new music, all of that. But the most successful music is the one that delivers、mm-hmm. that expectation of going back to the joke. Where is the punchline? Did I feel? Did I? Was、yeah. this? You know, was this coming? I mean, it's, it's, it's just at least that's how I think about it, and try to explain it to my students. But I, I think that this mindset affects、um, what I try to do when I'm writing. You know, I want to write music that impacts the listener.、Mm-hmm. I want to take them places. And I want, I do want them to trust me, and I want to draw them in. But I, it's my music. Come to this world, you know.、Right. Watch this. They don't know where they're going. But that's the whole point. It's a, a, a whole、uh, point. It's it's not to you know, oh, write a beautiful piece or write you know an ugly piece or write something that's just shocking for you know for the hell of it. So I'm just、right. gonna like show off all these things I can do with the instruments. It's about.、Um, Getting people to experience something. Yeah, and it, I mean it helps. Like with the album, at least it helps when you listen to it straight through,、uh, because you don't really get a sense for a composer if just listening to five minutes, eight minutes, like the five minute, eight minute orchestra piece you're going to write. You、mm-hmm. know, people listening to it, unless they know your other music, are not going to really get a sense of what you do from just that, and they're、yeah. not going to be. You know, no matter how good the piece is, even like you know John Adams, let's say short ride on a fast machine, you know. That's like not one of his、uh, eureka sort of pieces, you know. But it's、uh, the most famous. But it's the one. most played one. Yeah. And, but if you just heard that, you don't know John Adams. You don't know Harmonia Lear. You don't know. Yes. Yeah.、Um, you know, you don't know Nixon in China. You don't know.、Uh, you know,、um, what's that?、Uh, the, the string, the string orchestra. Shaker loops. Shaker loops. You don't know these pieces, which are the seminal、um, experiences. Not yeah, even. Yeah. yeah. But when you listen to this, you do get that. You do get a sense of who you are. You get lost in it, and that's—I mean—that's the intention, thank you. right? So, yes, yeah,、um, thank you. the same thing. You know, when I was at the Haas show, it's like I wonder if that's what the problem is. Maybe we should just hear a concert of just one composer. <laughs> yeah. So we have to get time to get to know them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they do all Mozart、uh, shows all the time, all Beethoven. Maybe two、um, hundred years from now. <laughs> all Raza's <laughs> show. <laughs> Yeah. All sad for dogs. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's,、um, but I I don't know those those kind of portrait concerts. I think、uh, at least for new composers, showcase what、um, what they do、mm-hmm. in a better way than just like, all right, here's this is a name. Let's put them on the show、yeah. and hope it sticks with the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's one of those things.、Um, you know. Uh, back in June, I went to、uh, League of American Orchestras、mm-hmm. uh, uh, conference、yeah. uh, convention. Where was it this year? LA. Oh, okay.、Um, wow. Okay. And it was it, that that was just so I felt so scattered minded when I was there. It was just like now go here, now go there, you know. And we're talking about all we're talking about is how do we connect with audience? How do we connect with or Um, orchestra musicians or the conductors, but all we're doing is running around, <laughs> and we're not really sitting and talking together. Like the composers did not have any shared、um, lectures or master classes or whatever you call them with conductors. We were in separate rooms, adjacent rooms. I'm surprised there was even composers invited to those things. Um, yeah, yeah. Or you just kind of show up, and whoever, how does that even I think, work? Yeah, I think people show up. They kind of sign sign up for it.、Uh, it's、uh, I was invited as part of the Toulmin project,、mm-hmm. uh, which is、um, I think uh, so. Uh, basically, what it is is a commissioning project.、Uh, League of American Orchestras picks、um, six or seven composers and、mm-hmm. matches them with orchestras. Oh, cool! And、uh, one of the good things about this program is that your piece、uh, gets to travel with different orchestras. So there are six of us. There are thirty orchestras involved, and、uh, each composer works with different ones. So you get to hear the piece. The piece gets to travel. So it's it's a it's a great idea. It's so a each fantastic composer、idea. gets like four or five. 
five orchestras. orchestras. Five orchestras. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, that's that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really I, I I feel like it's one of those things that I wish it would become the standard thing to You're do. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see that with co-commissions, but you know, those are yeah, hard to come Yeah, co-commissions are not really a thing. I find, I've tried to do those. They're, they <laughs> seem to be, people seem to be, or when I say people, I mean institutions seem to be, uh, they want ownership of the piece. They don't want right, to right. share it with anyone else and also put in the work of convincing some other institution to co-sign on a piece right. with them. Yeah. Anyway. So you were at the, you were there in LA, you were at this yeah, big conference. Yeah, it was part of this thing. It was, mm -hmm. it was part of uh, being a Toolman um, mm -hmm. so commissioning. So you had a booth or something uh, with all no, of you? No, we didn't, or? but, but okay. I did walk through the whole area with all the booths. Yeah. And it's like, what do I do here? So you didn't have a booth with the other? No. Oh, so what's the, so how does it even? I mean, they had a couple talks that involved composers. Um, one of them was about how to connect with orchestras mm -hmm. and how to get more orchestra commissions, get more orchestra performances. And it's just like, you know, it's, we've, we've been here, we've talked about this, you know, it's like, there's no way to solve this issue unless you bring the other people to the table. Right. You know, there's just so much a composer can do. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, at the end of the day, as much as I hate saying this, Everything is about collaboration. You know, right. it's about that human connection. If that's not there, then you know. I mean, we're trying. You can try, but it might not become a lasting. Yeah, product. just reaching out to an institution yourself as a composer is not going to cut it. Trust me, I've tried doing it. You know, it's it's uh, you know you, you sometimes you feel like you made an inroad, but at, but if if it wasn't there, I also have found that if it wasn't their idea to begin with to work with you. Uh, it's much less likely to happen mm -hmm. because you know everybody has an ego. You know they don't want to, and they want to feel like it was their idea to bring you along, because uh, it it has to be part of the institution umbrella. They don't mm -hmm. want somebody coming in randomly, and be like, oh, I'm here. You know they mm -hmm. want it. They want it to be their idea, um, and um, you know that's also really frustrating. <laughs> yeah. You know because yeah. we're the ones that are supposed to have the ideas. We're the idea people. We're we're composers. That's right, all we do. Right. <laughs> we're not you know organization type people at all. <laughs> we, we yeah. Are, our office is a mess. We, you know, we. <laughs> we don't have draw. any money. Well, we can't feed anybody. <laughs> well, my office is nice right now only because I cleaned it for you before you came. <laughs> but it's a mess usually. <laughs> it's okay. Some people, you know like the mess that's the that's the way their brains work right, right. i'm the opposite way i need a clean desk to start yeah, working really yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i like that i i mean i strive for that it doesn't it doesn't happen all the time but yeah. i strive i'd rather have that way <laughs> it's probably the middle eastern background in us both that uh <laughs> to, that has that to be organized you mean <laughs> yeah and like, like to be to be presentable, you know, like the house, the, like where you live, you know, it's, oh. I, I, you know, when people are over, you know, I'm very self, it's just like my mom, you know, my mom, like when somebody comes over, like, okay, we've got to like turn the whole ups, house upside down and clean everything. Clean and, everything. And even if it's like, but for, also when people leave. <laughs> oh, when they leave. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, <laughs> or change the sheets or, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. everything, change the towels, to yeah. this and that. Yeah. So that's, uh, it's uh, it's very different like going to people's like especially american like our american friends you go through their apartment it's like a mess it's like <laughs> that would never you know i would never think to yeah. allow that to happen you know? yeah yeah so yeah anyway i don't know how we got on this train but <laughs> <laughs> it's fine <laughs> yeah so you're working on this orchestra piece five minute piece you have this album out um which is all who, 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 the the orchestra piece you're talking about? Is it for this uh, League of American Work? Uh, yes. Yeah, so is it for that project? It was it was commissioned for so it's commissioned by League of American Composers. Uh, it's the program itself is called the Toolman Foundation mm -hmm. Commissioning Project, and uh, so the leading orchestra I'm working with is San Diego Symphony, Anna Klein is uh, doing the same thing, and Wang, Wang Lu, mm -hmm. um, Angel Lam, um, um, what's her name, oh my god, 
Arlene Sierra. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's fine. It's a lot of people to keep track of. <laughs> um, yeah, but, so, the, yeah. but the piece, the, the piece you're working on now, that's it's for that. So they wanted a five. That they wanted a five to eight minute. Five to piece. eight minute piece. Yeah. And everybody is writing five, a to, five eight to eight minutes. Five to eight minute piece. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. who's like. Uh, Who's like paying the the fee? Is it like the orchestras pay the fee or the the league the pays the fee? The Tulman the Foundation project. pays. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the contract I signed was actually with the league. Okay. But they assigned. So the way it worked is that um, all these different orchestras applied for this program to to play hmm. um, music of one of these composers, six composers. Interesting. And do they get funding too for some? I think for being part of the project. I think so. Yeah. But still, whatever funding they get is going to be uh, fractional compared to how much it costs to put on one of these shows, you know, right, to pay right. all the musicians yeah. and the venue and all that stuff. It really is a big leap, yeah. you know, for for new music, yeah. for composers and for orchestras. It's a healthy thing, you know. We yeah. need to move forward one way or another. That's where time is going. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, it's great that they're still doing programs like that because I, uh, at least the orchestra stuff I've done, I mean, I, I, I'm, I mean, the ones that are professional, they're, it's always been the orchestra pays whatever they can pay and, and that's that. So whether it's a mm. small amount or a big amount, I mean, it's not, it's almost like not up to me, you know, what, what the fee, they tell you, oh, it's $1,000 a minute or $2,000 a minute. They have that really uh, nice uh, new music USA calculator where it tells you, oh, this is how much you should get. But it's never, it's never like this in real life. Um, yeah, right. Oh, you're yeah. talking about the calculator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking was, about, right? I was, I was just thinking, two thousand a minute. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, I mean, the war one thousand or five hundred. I'm just, I don't know what the numbers are. Yeah. I, I never yeah. look at that thing. Yeah. I just. Yeah, it's I've never, never, I've never been there to I've the never, calculator. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen the calculator? Oh, it's very fancy. It's very. Oh, really? It sounds, sounds looks like somebody knew what they were doing programming yeah. it. But do you have to put in what kind of a composer you are? Like, <laughs> like, like you know, a famous composer, not famous composer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dead composer, living composer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you put dead composer. Yeah, it goes. The fee goes up. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, that's, I mean, it's good that they, they take that part of it away because if you start negotiating and stuff like that, it gets kind of squirrely. Um, yeah. Like what, what's, because no, there's no amount of money. I had a friend tell me she's published and she told me how much she was, she was getting for, for a concerto she was commissioned to write. Uh, she told me the fee and, you know, it was a big fee, but, you know, I said to this composer, yeah, it's a big fee, but it's going to take you a year to write the piece. So it's not a big fee anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. a, this is a, you know, like a waitress fee. Yeah. Or a janitor. Or, yeah. It's a minimum wage, uh, it is, you yeah. know, for, for, you know, for a year's worth of, uh, you know, a year, a year job doing minimum wage. I mean, it sounds, it is a lot of money in one go. Sure. But if it takes you a year to do it, then yeah. what is that, you know? Well, that's why people teach and perform and yeah. all of that. N- n- nobody can make a living off of yeah. composing. It's just, that's how it is. But even if you did, let's say you did, just hypothetically, can you, can you, can you, can you write for eight hours a day, like a normal job? Uh, no. All the time? No. Like well, my, 40 weeks out of the year, let's say? My... Um, process is I need to take breaks like yeah. after an hour I just need to get up and move um so no I couldn't do that if I had to get up yeah. and move <laughs> I mean for me I sometimes I, I take a month off from writing you know I take a month like a whole month and I don't feel bad about it I'm like I'm taking a month off and that's it that's so nice that you don't feel bad about it I think that's the that's the worst part about it the guilt but yes, then if you get rid of the guilt you know, yeah, the guilt somehow. is so bad. The yeah. guilt makes, you know, it's like as if you didn't have a break. Even if you took a break, yeah. you know, the guilt makes you feel like yeah. it didn't happen. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody <laughs> sees it. If anybody has been <laughs> listening this long with this, this dog here is now awake. What's up, Ivy? What's up, Ivy? <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> she's completely flipped. Yeah, she's usually the, the most attentive listener. Yeah. Out of anybody watching, I'm sure. That's so nice. Um, what about when you're composing? 
What is it? Does she does she hang around when you're composing? You know, she she doesn't really like anything I write, so she's she's definitely protesting every time I'm writing. She wants <laughs> she wants uh, me to pay attention to her. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the dog is actually really good for a composer because you know the dog needs to go out and pee every few hours. So like, yeah, you get to walk around. Yeah, I get yeah. out of the house, literally out of the house. Yeah, uh, do her thing, play a little bit. So what is around. your process, your work process? My work process. Well, actually, it's funny you mentioned the collaboration part of it because um, the last year or so. I've been just focused on writing solo music. I've never mm -hmm. written solo music before, ever. And now I'm writing a bunch of solo music. So like what you're saying, the collaboration thing, I've been doing a lot. Mm -hmm. So like I just recorded a piece for a solo oboe a few days ago um, and solo viola actually. We did it in the same session, like the three hour session up at Octavin. Yes. Um, yes. Did you, is that where you did? Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, so I yeah. was there Ryan too. Ryan Strieber, he's wonderful. Yeah, I did it with Edwin. Oh, okay. Um, but you know, we did, it was two short pieces, like five minutes each. Right, right. So we did it in three hours and, um, the, it was great. Cause like with the oboe player, I told him, you know, I want to write multiphonic scales, <laughs> you know, can you, can you just play me a bunch of multiphonics, different multiphonics shaking, <laughs> shaking. Can you just, um, play me a bunch of multiphonics that I could use as a scale, you know? So he gave me like 20 multiphonics, you know, and with the fingerings and everything. And, and he wrote down all the, the partials that, and right. which ones are, are uh, which partials you can hear more, mm -hmm. which ones are more faint, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and then yeah. he recorded them. That's wonderful. And then I, I programmed them into the, into logic. Oh, so nice. like, does it have electronics? No, uh, it's just acoustic, but oh. the way I composed it, Cause it was really hard to like keep all these multiphonic sounds in my head like right. which ones do yes. i use and the fingerings also were uh you know you can only like play like these three in a row you can't like jump from these three to these three because mm. the fingerings are awkward mm -hmm. so i programmed them into logic so like on my keyboard like you know this low c is that multiphonic this d is that mm -hmm. one this e so i was just like composing like that and all the ones that you could play sequentially they would be next to each other on the keyboard uh, so see, you can like jump around do -do 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 -do, like this and i was writing it like that so when it came time for him to actually play the piece i was like writing like these really fast sequential multiphonic stuff mm -hmm. for the oboe right uh you know and usually with the multiphonics you kind of just sit on it like yeah you know, i was gonna say play. can they play like, oh yeah fast? he was so he was playing these things and it was just so gratifying because like if I was writing a, any other kind of piece or an orchestra piece or whatever, where I don't get to go back and forth with the player, um, it would have been impossible. I would have, I would never have grew as a composer. So now I yeah. have these sounds in my back pocket right. yes, that yes, I would yes, never have had before. Amazing. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm just, that was just the last thing I did. That mm -hmm. oboe thing was, um, especially the oboe piece. Cause I, I learned so much, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, collaborations are really fun. You, you tend to get out a, a lot out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You learn a lot and, and they're fun, you know? Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't like done like a proper commission for like at least a year. Um, there are probably a couple coming soon, but honestly, I've had the most fun doing these solo pieces. Like I have four of them now mm -hmm. and I'm writing another four. And they're a part of my like sequenza project. Oh, um, nice. That all I'm different doing. instruments. All different instruments. I already have trumpet, uh, the trump, all four of them have already been recorded on octave and trumpet. Uh, Sam Jones did the trumpet. I don't know if you know Sam Jones. Uh, he was at Juilliard, but while I was there. Okay. Um, oboe, Joseph Jordan, he always also at Juilliard. Noemi Shamali did the viola and uh, Oh God, I'm missing one more. Oh yeah, Brandon Patrick George. He's the um, flute player for the Imani Winds. Oh, he yeah. recorded um, I, I think I a flute yeah. uh, piece. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Oh, you know him? I or? kind of. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, Did you work have with? Have you paths. worked with Imani before? No, I have not. Oh, you, you, your music, I think, would would jive well with them. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Definitely. I don't really have wind quintets. Nobody has wind quintets. <laughs> I don't I have, have wind quintet either. I wrote it like my first semester at Juilliard. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one from my USC days too. It's really yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> But, yeah. 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 Well, Ivy, you wanna? All right, Ivy. Well, thank you, Gitsi, for coming by. Thank um, you can people, for having where me. Where can people? Um, where can people uh, listen to this? Um, anywhere that they listen to music, they can listen. Okay, on, it's everywhere. Yeah, iTunes. Uh, I, I mean, Apple Music, Spotify. Um, Amazon. Cool. And where could they find you? Uh, online on my website. You know, All right. At you know, right, put, com. Tell you what, I'll put her. <laughs> I'll put the information about this. If you lasted this long, I'll put the information about this and her website down in the description <laughs> below. And if you liked what you see so far, I mean, if you if you. There you go. That's that means we're done. If you like what you see so far, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll have more uh, composers and musicians here. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So cute.